welcome back, welcome back. Here in part five, we are going to be connecting the create page to our server. I'm very excited to share that with you today. So this is where we left off last time. We uh, connected our journal entry squares and our home page to our server. Now we're gonna do that with our create page because we can obviously type stuff in here um, and we have a journal entry here, right? But we need to connect it. When we hit this create button, so far nothing happens. So let's dive in. All right, so in our create page, um, let's go here, create.js. We've got a lot of the setup already done and um, it's gonna be a pretty easy going forward from here. We need to do a couple things. Uh, we need to, in our tags area, we need to be able to handle multiple tag entries and also just make it visually representative of what tags we currently have and then add the ability to delete ones that we were like, ah, crap, I don't want that. Um, so let's go ahead and make that right now. In our input field, we've got our class name, our name. We are going to do something called a ref, okay? Um, and our ref is going to require some type of reference to pass in. In React, there is a hook called use ref. Um, we're gonna do const tags equals use ref. I love this uh, this hook because it allows us to do things that we would typically use event dot target dot value for. Um, kind of like here, this handle submit when we this is an event handler. Uh, or the event uh, object. So we could we could actually, on handle submit, we could actually log uh, E. Um, and rather than log, let's alert it, because that seems fun. Let's alert E, okay? Um, what happened here? Oh, <laughs> add tags to that ref field so it doesn't throw an error. So we're here, we click tag, right? We get object, object, fine. Let's go ahead and console log E. Um, essentially that's gonna show us, uh, I'm gonna right click here, inspect, go to our console, I'm gonna click create. We saw something briefly pop up and we're about to talk about that. Um, but then it vanished, okay? Now what's happening is with React, we need to add the special value called e.preventDefault. Um, e.preventDefault. Um, I'd recommend Googling what this is. The, the long and short of it is we just saw that there's something going on with the re-rendering of the page that React does, where we just see it out here for a split second, but then it's gone. Essentially, that is React doing its thing that it naturally does, but we're losing our event data persisting, okay? So now when we click it, it's here. Um, so this is the event uh, object, and typically what you do, you do event.target and then you'd find a value of something, right? What the ref tag does, or the, the use ref hook, um, it's going to allow us to do something a little bit different. So I'm gonna do tags. And so how this works, our input field is going to get populated with a reference to our use ref hook. And this reference will contain a bunch of information about the input field itself. And so now when we go here to our, our uh, application and we click create, we can see this, this 
uh, object here with a key of current and input text background. So if we click current, this is literally everything we just saw up here in the event, right? This is React's way of just tying everything into the React ecosystem, um, which I think is awesome. Not needing to target the event uh, object is a, such a proper way of just keeping everything in the React. And we see here there's this uh, value key that is obviously an empty string. So what we do is with React use ref, you do, um, right, you obviously associate it to a variable. You assign that variable to a ref property or attribute inside whatever element you want to have a reference for. And then you do that variable dot current dot value. Okay, so we'll save that. And now in this tags input field, we'll do hello. Um, and I'll bring this up here to the side. Let me minimize that. So now when I click create, we can see it logged the value of the current input value. So I, I, I think this is awesome. Kudos to React for building this. Okay, so going back to our VS code, we need to do a few things. Um, up here, we need to create a use state. Um, so we'll do const uh, an array, and it's going to be tags list, and then set tags list. Um, and just in case I didn't mention it before, that is the that's the kind of adage or the the verbiage you're going to want to use for whenever you set uh, states. It's going to be the name and then set the name, okay? We're gonna have this equal to an empty array. And the reason for that is because we're gonna create a variable called const tag buttons. Now this tag buttons is going to take our tags list and map through it. Okay, so we're gonna have the first index have the name of tag or whichever index it's going through. And then we're going to return, by the way, in your, in your map functions, if for some reason, I've, I've learned this over years of developing, if for some reason you're not seeing the output of whatever you're mapping through, there's a good chance you don't have a return, uh, returning the things you want to have looped through. So we're going to create a button element. Um, we're going to output tag, which is going to be the name of the tag, and then a capital letter X. Um, we're going to, for developer structure of things, I, I do like to, when we're doing things like this, um, go up to the closing of the first HTML thing and just hit enter and enter again because we're gonna have a few attributes on this button tag. So first we're gonna have a class name of button. Next we're gonna have a value equal to tag. Then we're gonna have on click is going to be equal to e arrow function remove item. Okay. Um, and then we're gonna have a type, because you need a type of button. And then we're gonna have a key, which is just gonna be math.random times five, okay? That'll be our key. So why did we do this? I want us to be able to create a list of tags that display next to the label. So we're actually gonna output that here, tag buttons. But I want us to be able to have a clickable area where we can uh, go ahead and just X, uh, uh, delete the uh, tag that we wanted, okay? Um, 
One could argue that this doesn't need to be an entire button. Uh, the tag itself should be wrapped in something different. And then the X should have a association with it with the on click. Just to make it simple, we're going to wrap the entire thing in a button and an on click uh, is going to wrap the inside of it. So now we need to make the remove, not remove e, uh, remove item function. So we're going to do const remove item. It's going to equal e arrow function. And we're going to have a const new state, which is going to equal tags list dot filter. OK, so filter is another way to go ahead and loop through our um, to loop through things similar to a map function, okay? The filter method is a way that we can add logic to include or exclude things. So we're gonna do tag arrow function, and we're going to return tag is not exactly equal to e.target.value. And now you're going to be like, Kevin, didn't we just talk about e.target.value? We did. For simple sake, I'm just going to put this here um, and we'll clean it up after. But then I want to do set tags list to new state. Okay. And finally, um, we want to go ahead and add to these tag button to the tag button or to the tags list, right? Currently, we're not adding to it. It's just an empty array. And I guess for a cool example, we could do hello test click me. Oops, wrap that in a string. <laughs> and oops, here we go. Get rid of that one. Uh, so in the create section, oh, very cool. We have an error here. What is the error? Math.randon is not a function, correct. I mistyped and it should be math.random with an M as in Mary. So this is cool. We have our tags list here. Um, we have hello, test, and click me. We're gonna click me. Oh, it's gone. Look at that. <laughs> so that's the functionality I wanted to have happen. So we, we now saw click me is no longer there. Obviously, if we refresh the page, however, it's back because we have this hard coded. Um, but we can X all of them, refresh, they're back. You did see a little bit of a adjustment here with that. Eh, I'm not too worried about it. Um, but let's go ahead and now be able to add items as we type something in and then hit the space bar. So we'll go back to our VS code and we're going to put on our uh, input, we're going to put a uh, on key down command. Um, so on key down equals curly brackets. Now we're going to do e arrow function handle space down and we'll throw the e in there okay um, handle space down is not defined that's right because we're about to define it so in this case we do have a reason for using uh, the event handler okay um, we're going to create a function called const handle space down. Inside here, we're going to put e. Now, the reason why we're going to specifically use the event uh, object here is because we need to target what keyboard inputs are being uh, typed. Um, and so you can actually look at that by we'll do a, a console log. Um, keyboard, and then we'll do E, 
Okay, um, I expect a token. Oops, I need to put a comma there. So we'll go here. Uh, let me just push this back to the side. Um, I'll bring my inspect back up and go to console. So if I click here, I'm going to do D or E or L, right? And we can see it's being triggered by the React name on key down, right? That's the event that's uh, that is our React binding on the key down event on our input field. Um, but we're going to look for something called code. And there are only certain keyboard strokes uh, or, or um, inputs that we want to trigger a tag being created and added up here to the labels area. <clears throat> uh, let me clear that. So the space bar is one. Um, we can see here there's a key code of 32 that we're going to target. We can also see there's a code of space that we're going to target. The other one is going to be the enter key. And we can see when we hit the enter key, there's a key enter, there's a key code, there's a code enter. Okay. So we're going to go to our VS code and in our handle space down, get rid of the console log, we're going to say if e.code is exactly equal to space or e.keycode, which is camel cased, is exactly equal to 32 or E dot code is exactly equal to enter. Okay. Now, why I added uh, key code dot thirty two is there can be browser differences with the spacebar. Um, so, just to cover those browser differences, um, I added the key code thirty two. But just being able to target all these uh, attributes is really helpful. So what do we need to do? We need to do our e.preventDefault to make sure the data persists. And then we need to uh, do a couple things. We need to take the current value of the input field. Um, and we need to be able to separate that out of the input field. We need to add it to, um, to a list. And then we need to go ahead and set the tags list to include this new uh, this new button, this new tag that we created. So first things first, we're going to create a const and call it tags separated. And we're going to equal tags.current.value. Okay, so we even though we're using the event uh, object here, we're only doing that to target what keystroke is being had. Once we've gotten and we've found that these specific uh, inputs, these keystrokes are being created, now we're going to go ahead and get the value of the input field, and then we're going to split it, okay? And we'll do a string quotes and have a space in there. Now, for anybody who knows, uh, actually, let's let's just quick demonstrate this. Um, we'll do a log. Oops, uh, control V. I'm going to comment this out here. Do do. We'll clear that, and so now I can type in whatever I want. Right? Nothing's getting triggered until I hit the enter or the space key. So we'll do hello. Now you see there, when I hit hello, that triggered, it hit our function and hello is being put there. Now when we add the split uh, function at the end of our value, this naturally takes this string and splits it out into an array. Um, and we can actually look at that here. We can do dot split js 
JavaScript string split method, and it's loading. And essentially, the split method splits a string into an array of substrings. It also returns the new array, and it also does not change the original string. So if a string or a quote with a space is used as a separator, the string is split between words. Okay, so that's exactly what we're doing here. Um, so if we actually just console log dot split with a string but put a space inside, now we should see our uh, console show that an array is being produced. So I hit space again. Look at that. We now see an array is being produced with hello. So going forward from there, we're going to take this array, right? We want to make sure uh, that a, a kind of a, a crazy behavior can happen. Um, let's say if we just delete all this, if we accidentally hit enter or hit the space bar, you see how just empty strings are being populated in the array? We don't want that. We want to avoid that from happening. So we're going to go ahead and create a filter method on our tags uh, separated. So const filter list equals tags separated dot filter. And that's essentially going to target, right? the index that it loops through and it's going to return everything as long as tag does not equal an empty string. Okay, so we're going to bring this down here and we're going to actually console log filter list. So you can see I hit I can hit the space bar, um, and it's just it's it's not adding anything, right? It's just console logging an empty array, which an empty array isn't going to add any value to us, right? Um, so now we're gonna do our set tags list, and this is something I actually just taught a fellow coworker of mine the other day. When we are using functional components, we have to be careful of our, our state, okay? Um, and this is going to be a great example. I'll show you exactly how this, this works. Uh, so when we refresh the, the app, we can see these uh, hard-coded strings are created as our uh, buttons, right? In class-based components with React, you don't have to worry about this. But let's say we just wanted to set our tags list to our filter list, okay? Um, much like in a class-based component, you would do this dot set state to right filter list, okay? <clears throat> if we do that here, if I do, um, let's type in crazy, now, if I hit space, what well, it, crazy just it got added, which is awesome, but it got rid of every other label that I had up there, every other tag that I added, right? What we need to do, I'm gonna get rid of that, is we need to get the previous state, and then we'll arrow function, and then we need to spread out the previous state and then spread out the filter list all right because the the filter list is an array and the spread operator takes everything in that array and just spreads it out it's no longer an array um, definitely google that if you don't understand that um, but now that we have our previous state there we're saying okay we already have a previous state. So this is this is essentially going to be equal to uh, it's essentially going to be equal to that 
And then let's say we typed in crazy. When I typed in crazy, if we have our previous state being spread out and then our crazy string being spread out, this is what it'll equivalent to. And I'm about to show you that. So now let's refresh the page. If I type in crazy, we can see it was added to the state rather than replacing the state. And that's super important with functional components, okay? Now, we can see that it's still there in the field and I don't really want that. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna do tags.current.value is equal to an empty string. Okay. Now, we're gonna refresh the page. I'm gonna hit crazy and when I hit space, it's going to be added as a new tag, but also the input field is going to be cleared. And now we can do another thing, like we can do the word down, or up, or side, right? That's really cool. I, I loved when I created that. I was like, no, this is so exciting. And then again, you can just go ahead and delete all those, bada bing, bada boom. So with that now, we're actually gonna get rid of our hard-coded labels or, or tags that we created. So now if we refresh the page, we can see nothing's being created there and now we can make our own tags. Happy, sad, money, right? Whatever tag you want associated with this journal entry will now be included up there. All right, so now we want to be able to hit this create button and have it submit our entry to our database and then clear everything, okay? Um, let's go ahead and create the, the form reset first. So we're gonna do const, we'll call it reset form. That's going to be here. Along with this, we're going to need to add a couple new use refs. Um, we're gonna need to do const title equals use ref. We'll bring it down here. We'll do const text area equals use ref. Okay, let me get the semicolons in there. And so we need to go down to our section here. We need to put a ref associated with title. All right, and then our text area, we need to have a ref equals text area, boom. Okay, now why did I do that? Uh, for the exact same reason, we just cleared the input field when we submit our form, we wanna go ahead and just clear all the uh, values out of our, uh, our form. So we'll do text, uh, sorry, we'll do title dot current dot value equals empty string. Text area or tags, we'll do tags dot current dot value empty string text area empty string and then lastly we need to set our tags list back to an empty array okay and now we had a handle submit handler here that we need to uh, add this reset form to Reset form, boom. Okay, so to see how this all works, we'll have a title, hello. We'll have a couple tags, we'll do hey, hi, howdy. And then we'll also make an entry being, I'll uh, just button smash there, okay? So we'll go down here, we'll hit create, and it cleared the form, it, it cleared it. Right? That's exactly what we want. But 
we want to actually submit this to our database before clearing the form, okay? So in our handle submit, we're going to go ahead and do a fetch. We're going to await it first, and we need to make it asynchronous. And let's go ahead and put a space there so it's proper. So we need to await fetch. Now, we need to uh, create this on the back end as well, but let's go ahead and send data through here. So we're going to have it be the method of create. And in our object, um, let's go back to our previous uh, in our home.js, we're going to go ahead and copy a couple things. We're going to copy from line 11 to line 15. And we'll go back to create.js, paste it in there. This is going to be a post request. We're going to actually post data to the database. Now we're going to have a body tag here. Inside our body tag, we're going to uh, have our journal object, which is going to have tags, and that's going to be equal, be equal to, can you guess it? Our tags list, and remember we're gonna spread that out. We're gonna have our title, which is going to be equal to, yep, our title.current.value, and let's just throw that down there. I did, uh, everybody always uh, shift alt down to just duplicate that field. I'm gonna highlight title, control D and do body. I guess I didn't need to do that because we're gonna have this as our text area dot current dot value. So we're assigning the tags key to our tags list, our title key to our title value, body to our text area value. Now, because the content type needs to be JSON, we need to turn this into JSON. So we're going to cut this, control X. We're going to do JSON.stringify and parentheses, and it's going to need to be a JSON object. So we're going to hit enter and now paste what we just had back in. From there, we need to add the same then stuff. So let's actually, again, work smarter, not harder. Go back to home, grab these, go back to our create.js, paste those there. And I'll throw that there. We have our reset form, but then finally, we need to set is store updated to true. And the reason why that's true is because once we submit it to the database, we want to be able to navigate back to the home page and see our newest field. So because we need to access our store provider, we need to go ahead and do our const, our destructured set is store update. Did. did I do updated? Oops, updated. Um, I have a habit sometimes of typing too fast. Use store, and if you hit down, hit enter, it adds it right there for you. Boom. All right, let's dive into our server JS real quick. So we're diving into our server JS. <clears throat> we need to go down here. So we did our app.get. Now we need to be smart. We're going to highlight it, shift alt down. Okay, we'll create a space. On line 71 is where we'll start. So we'll do, it's gonna be a post request. We need to change this to create. Um, and now we're gonna do something very similar. So we're gonna do mongos.connect. We kind of already did this, uh, I believe, in the last part, part three or part four. But we're going to do journal dot create, and it's going to be our request dot body dot journal. Okay, and again, uh, 
when we're in the create area, our body is going to contain a JSON object, which inside is going to have our journal object. And that's what we want to be creating with in our journal.create. <clears throat> um, what's going on here? Why does it not like that? Uh, it expected a comma. Oh, this should not actually be inside of curly brackets because it of itself is going to be an object, okay? Um, we'll go ahead and get rid of that because we don't need to return the journal that we just created. Um, yeah. Let's go for it. Uh, we also need to change this to finish uh, create call. And let's actually just make that capitalized. Boom. Okay. So how can we test this? Well, <laughs> let's go ahead and create a journal entry. So we'll call it title, we'll call it something besides test. We'll call it first entry. And tags, we'll have it be first entry, excited, yay. And then down here, we'll just do once upon a time in a land far, far away. Boom. I'll go down here and we'll click create. Cool. Okay, so everything got cleared. Now we're going to go back to our home page and see if it worked. It's waiting. Look at that. Our first entry is here. We have all the tags with it. Once upon a time in a land far, far away. Guys, this is exciting. <laughs> This is awesome. Congratulations, you were able to connect the create page to our server, do a few different things like add labels and create buttons and, ah, oh, this is awesome. This is cool. And we can see we went, we went here, but this didn't refresh again because it doesn't need to. Because once we created this, we set is updated to true, but once we went back to the home page, it set it to back to false. So we're not making constant API calls. Ah, oh, congratulations guys, this is awesome. We'll see you in the next video where we'll go and we'll now create the search page so you can actually search through the journal entries that you created and grab specific ones.